CBC Color Presentation. Canadian professional football. This portion brought to you by Canadian Pacific. Serving you in so many ways. It's a virtual sellout here in Ottawa today. 27,472 fans in their seats and waiting for the opening kickoff of what should be a very exciting and entertaining football game. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tom McKee, and on behalf of these 27,000 fans and the CBC Television Network, let me welcome you to our color coverage from coast to coast. This should be a very exciting and entertaining game, as I said. It could be one of the key games of the season for either of these clubs, and either one could end up in that game, that Grey Cup game in Montreal on November the 30th. It is the most important game to date in the Eastern Conference as these two clubs meet for this home-and-home weekend-to-weekend series. Bernie Filoni, the former star quarterback, is here, our expert analyst. And Bernie, I wonder what you're looking forward to this afternoon. For example, do you think there's any possibility that we could have a coach's game? I think so, Tom. Uh, the old professor, Frank Clare, has been very successful over the past years. And he's uh, had a, a group of boys together that have been playing very well. And likewise, Leo Cahill, uh, a young coach in the head coaching position of the Toronto Argonauts, has amassed a fine uh, array of football players, and I think that he's going to have a fine season also. They're going to have to work against each other, compete against each other. The coaching duel today is going to be something else. Well, certainly there's going to be competition from either sideline. Now, as we get out on the field, of course, there's going to be a good deal of competition, too. What about those quarterbacks, for example? Well, let's look at uh, Tom Wilkinson, number 19. He's the young quarterback from the Toronto Argonauts, and Tom Wilkinson is a uh, fine quarterback, uh, 5'10 and a half inches tall, 186 pounds, 26 years of age, a little short than most coaches would like to have their quarterbacks, but he has overcome this handicap by a rollout type of a passer. Fine intelligence, good leadership qualities, and that's what got him the job over Wally Gabler. And it's number 12 at the other end warming up. Russ Jackson, the old pro, experienced, six feet tall, 200 pounds, 32 years of age. Excellent experience as an old pro, leadership, physical mentality of the game. All these qualifications are excellent. The only thing we have never seen Russ Jackson do is punt the football. He can roll out and stand in that pocket very well. Of course, a quarterback can't do everything. These men help, too. Dave Ramey, number 14, acquired a trade from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. An explosive runner is also a fine receiver for Tom Wilkinson, and he's the guy we have to watch for the Argonauts today. And on the other side, Vic Washington, number 27 from the Ottawa Rough Riders, the explosive halfback, another fine receiver, and Vic Washington will be on the end of Russ Jackson passes. A real ground duel, a real passing duel, a real coaching duel. It looks like a fine football game today, Tom. And of course, Toronto has that added advantage with Phil Simons in there. Do you think he'll be playing a better psychological game because he's coming in on a three-year contract, first game after signing that contract? Three-year contract, and he has Dave Ramey back there to help him out. I'm sure he's going to be uh, up for this ball game. He's the outstanding football player last year, and I'm sure he's going to come back again. Okay, Bernie, let's find out if there are any lineup changes. There should be, possibly, for uh, Ottawa, maybe not for Toronto. Don Chevry, our play-by-play -play broadcaster. Um, Toronto is just about set. Uh, Ottawa has several changes brought about by injuries. Jim Kane is dressed, but won't likely play very much, if at all. And, uh, of course, Dave Braggins has to go to offense to take care of Mo Racine's shoulder injury, which has him out for the entire season. Jay Roberts was named as the 14th import. Ottawa's fine tight end. That means young Tommy Pullen, the Canadian, will play that spot for him. 
Last year, it was all Ottawa over the Argonauts at five league and playoff games. This year, not much to choose between them. But the best test comes today when they meet head-on for the first time. The Argonauts and the Rough Riders are all set. We'll be ready for our national anthem on the opening kickoff after this message. When it comes to looking after the pies that Mother makes, Joe Mooney is a real fuss budget. He cares so much about Mother's pies that he looks after each one himself. And when he has to send a shipment to a customer, he makes sure nothing can go wrong. He uses CP Ships containers, of course. He knows there's no better way to ship Mother's pies because the cargo stays in the container and the container stays unopened. The only thing that gets handled is the container itself. So when it gets to his customer, it will be just the way Joe packed it. And Joe, he's so relaxed, he can take Mother Mooney off on a White Empress vacation cruise. For a fuss budget like Joe, that says a lot about our containers. CP Ships, another way Canadian Pacific serves you. The atmosphere electric here in Ottawa. First big game, first of three between the Rough Riders and the Argonauts and a good portion of this crowd, more than 600 in by bus from Toronto. Every seat in Lansdowne Park occupied. And there is that cannon, which has been a source of annoyance to many fans here, but sparks the start of what should be a great afternoon of Canadian professional football. The Toronto Argonauts are going to receive Don Southern's opening kickoff. They have sent number 14, Dave Ramey, back to the end zone for the kickoff, along with number 20, Jim Thorpe. Sutherland, the number two scorer in the Eastern Conference behind Tommy Joe Coffey. The referee is Harry Ross, and away we go. <laughs> Ramey at the three. <laughs> Ramey to the 31, hit there by Barry Ardern. He got the ball back 27 yards, falling lead through the Ottawa Rough Riders attacking team with the defensive maneuvers, and he returns to the 31, where it's first down for Toronto. They have in their backfield the quarterback 19, Tom Wilkinson, Ramey 14, and Bill Simon, with Bobby Taylor at the flanker 24, and Jim Thorpe number 20, the other flanker. Ramey. Nine-yard gain. They'll be second and one. Gene Gaines, number 22, and Billy Joe Booth, 65, the Rough Rider tacklers. Mel Prophet is number 75. The Argonauts, long pass receiver. Bill Van Berkleyo has the tackle on Bill Simons after a Toronto first down of the 46. 
Two running plays. The Argos have moved the ball 15 yards. Wendy Thorpe, Buddy Ford, Taylor, both right. Bobby Taylor, first down in Ottawa territory at the 47 yard line. Hit by Campbell and Gaines. Gaines was 17 yards. Two most exciting offensive teams in the CFL. Ramey. Ken Lehman tripping. Dave Ramey, Gene Gaines with the tackle. The advance to the 41 is six yards. Toronto's second and four. Wilkinson has the first down at the Ottawa 35. The advance was six, and Lehman ran him out of bounds. Rough Riders are playing that 4-3 defense, and as we spoke earlier, Tom Wilkinson is a rollout type of quarterback, and you have to contain him. They didn't contain him on the one 17-yard pass, and in this particular play, he was able to pick up the first down. Number 20, Thorpe goes right, 24, Taylor left. Simon. A loss of two yards. Billy Joe Booth, number 65, adjusting his helmet, the tackler. Booth just broke through the offensive blocking to get to the ball carrier. And that is the first reversal the Argonauts have had in this series, which began with the kickoff back at their 31. Makes a rainy. For Jim Thorpe, after a juggling act with Billy Van Berkleyo and Billy Cooper also back covering, incomplete. So the Argonauts are third and 12 at the Ottawa 37 yard line. Dave Mann's longest field goal last Sunday against Saskatchewan, 37 yards. This attempt from the 44. <laughs> Cooper out at the 15 yard line. And Cooper's back, springing right back after running into that wall. Underneath the main grandstand. There's an indication here, Don. The uh, Ottawa Rough Riders finally overcame what Tom Wilkinson was trying to do. There was a. This is going to be a game of uh, very few mistakes, and the mistakes that are being capitalized on, or will be capitalized on, by the offensive powers on the field, are going to be the team that wins this football game. Russ Jackson leads them out. Washington slips. He will lose about four. Ed Harrington, 54, there to pin him down. And again, as mentioned on the pregame portion of our telecast, the great contest between 27 Washington and 14 for Toronto, Dave Ramey. The loss was three yards. They are second and 13. 65 is Vernon Van Oy, the 6'8", 280-pound rookie defensive end for the Argonauts on the left side. Edkins. He has the first down. Russ Jackson, a great quarterback on a second...
Jackson hitting with the first down. At the four and a half minute mark of the first quarter of the score, Toronto nothing, Ottawa nothing. This microwave tower is part of a telecommunication circuit that can send messages across the continent at 186,000 miles per second. All kinds of messages. Yes, Mr. Miller, it's on the telex now. Let's take another look at that touchdown on our instant replay. Right, Charlie. We'll send you everything by broadband later today. The weather map just received shows a high-pressure system moving in from the west. telecommunication system so you can send data across the country at the speed of light and there's nothing faster than that CP telecommunications another way Canadian Pacific serves you both quarterbacks have made one completion both for 17 yards and that one to Adkins to the 27 yard line and the Rough Riders are first down from there is 26 with Tucker 11 Stewart breaks to the right. Takes to Mankin. And a throw too far for Vic Washington. Ron Aran, 17, defending for the Argonauts. We are early in the first quarter in Ottawa. No score. Frank Clare with his team against the club regarded to be the best threat to the Ottawa Rough Riders in 1969. The pass coverage appears to be Dick Thornton on Whit Tucker. Jim Tomlin covering Margie Atkins. Jackson down. Hands of Pete Martin, number 77. Big charge from the right side. There's Pete Martin, the inside linebacker, moving out to his position, and then he comes on hard to contain Jackson. And this is what you have to do, keep Jackson into a pocket and not give him enough time to throw the football, as you see he didn't there. The loss is 14 yards. Rough Riders, with their first punt of the game coming up, are third and 24 at the 14-yard line. The Agonauts send back Mike Evans, number 32, and Jerry Sternberg, number 34, to await Bill Van Berkeley's punt from near the goal area. Sternberg at the 50. Down those sidelines before Giardino, number 21, forced him out. The return was 20 yards on that 46-yard punt. The Argonauts are first down at the Ottawa 39. A couple of newcomers today, Don. We'd like to welcome viewers at CBKRT in Regina and CBKMT in Moose Jaw to our network, watching today's game in full color. Welcome, people. Tackle by Gene Gaines. In behind the line of scrimmage, the loss will be three yards between the 41 and the 42. Everybody's been speaking about the explosive offenses of both teams, but it looks today, so far, the trend of the game is defense. Go get them, because the Ottawa Rough Riders are disguising their 4-3 and stunting quite a bit. Fourth, number 20, wide right, Taylor 24 to the left. Pass for Paul Markle, incomplete at the 25-yard line. That's a good point, Bernie. We hear so much and talk so much about the explosive offensive teams that both these clubs possess. We tend to forget they're both fine defensive football clubs as well. And their averages show that. 
with the Rough Riders giving up 20 points a game through six league games so far on the average, and the Argonauts just a little bit better, having yielded 18 per game. Here's Dave Mann's punt. It's a dandy. Our turn. We'll just let it go. And the Argonauts score first. Dave Mann's punt, 61 yards for the single. And it's the Argonauts one, the Rough Riders nothing. About midway through this first quarter. Let's get back on the defense for a minute again, Don. The, uh, I'm talking with the coaches last night. The uh, Argonauts are going to try to disguise their blitz as much as possible. In the last game, they blitzed, I think it was 17 times. And uh, they're going to do a lot of blitzing here today. From the 25, Ottawa first down. Jim Mankins has four yards near the 29. Alan Ray Aldridge, number 44. Mike Bloom, number 70. The Packers for Toronto. And Ottawa will be second and six. Ed Lurd, number 15, got quite a rap early in that Saskatchewan game and had to sit on the bench the rest of the day, but he's fine, and as you see, very much a part of the Argonauts' deep defensive secondary this afternoon. Jackson with a good rush, hurrying that throw for Marv Gene Atkins. Marv Luster was in, crowding Jackson. So number 34, Sternberg and 32 even, 08, Van Berkeley's punt back at the Toronto 35. Sternberg. Tried to follow the same route that was so successful earlier, and he got it back 10 yards before Bain and 61 pushed him out. The front traveling 42. From their own 50, Toronto has a first down. This is one of two games of the CFL today. Tonight, the British Columbia Lions meet the Calgary Stampeders in Calgary, and those watching on the CBC Western Network will be able to see that at 8 o'clock tonight, Calgary time. Score is 1-0 here. 6.30 left for the first quarter. Toronto leads. Marker on the play, Thorpe, the intended receiver. Dean Gaines covering, but the infraction is back at the line of scrimmage. And the indication is offensive holding against Toronto. Danny Nicoluk, the Argonauts veteran captain, number 60. Representing his club at the meeting. The penalty takes it back. Holding to the 40-yard line. Here's that play. Let's see if we can see the holding in the line of scrimmage. And there you can see it, Danny Nicolak. And that's where the penalty is. Got a pretty firm grip on Billy Joe Booth. So it's first and 20. Five-yard gain, cut down by Marshall Shirk and Gene Gaines at the Toronto 45. Ramey, as you see, will pace himself behind the blocking, waiting for it to form up. Charlie Bray, 57, was out leading it for him that time, but the Rough Rider defense broke it down and held him to five. Argonauts are second and 15 now from the 45. Thorpe and Taylor Wright. Wilkinson. All the way to the Rough Riders 30. We didn't say anything about Tom Wilkinson's running. We said he was a rollout type of a quarterback. And when he does get that chance to, to go with the ball, they're dropping off. He takes off and he makes an excellent run here. Effort. All effort on his own. 
to move that ball within scoring position. Finally, Don Southern with that shove as he lost momentum, pulled him down. The gain was 35 yards. First down from the Ottawa 30. Wilkinson likely trying to catch his breath. Simon! Touchdown! On the first play after Wilkinson's long run, Simon goes in the 30 yards to score, and the Argonauts have a 7 0 lead with a convert pending. Here's Bill Simons. On a trap play up the center, cuts back, good blocking in there by those front three people, the guards. And there's Bill Simons breaking away from the Gene Gaines safety man all the way in. We spoke about Bill earlier, and was he going to play a great game? Dave Mann has the convert. That, by the way, is Simons' longest run from scrimmage this year. His previous long gain was 25 yards. Also his first touchdown running. The Argonauts, 70 yards in three plays for the score. Leo K. Hill in the early stages must be pretty satisfied. But we stress the fact that it's early. 27, Vic Washington, 73, Margene Atkins dropped to the goal area for the kickoff from Dave Mann. Atkins at the 10. The 45, out at the 50. Flag slide. Turn and this is an excellent run by Margie Atkins. It's fine blocking. He looks like he's hung up there, but he gets out and he's returning that ball. And let's look at on the sidelines. It's roughing penalty. The roughing call. Here it is, right Marco here. tackle and number 34. Sternberg gets the roughing call. A return of 40 yards. So they tack on the yardage on the penalty. It goes to the 44, and the Rough Riders are first down from there. Ronnie Stewart. Aldridge had a good shot, was taken out. Finally, Tomlin, 23, made the tackle. Gain is going to be six. Make it five, just inside the 40. Second and five from there. Jackson, Stewart, Mackins, Washington in the backfield. Tucker the flanker. Tom Cullen playing the tight end. Margie Atkins is the loose end. And 26, Tucker comes right. Atkins spread far left. And Stewart goes in motion left. Ed Harrington took the feet out from under Russ Jackson. And then Mike Bloom leaned in just to make sure Jackson wouldn't go anymore. And the Rough Riders do not have the first down. They are short by a couple. And Don Southern comes in. About three yards short. Southern's attempt, Jackson to hold, will come from the 44, angle left. Outside! Wide right. Runs right into a pile of players, and let's see if that ball squirts out. That's for yourself. 
Well, it did, Bernie, but a little late. The Argonauts have been given the ball. They retained possession of the 13-yard line after an early signal that Ottawa was to have possession. Ronnie Stewart was doing the arm wrestling for the football and uh, came up with it, but just a little bit too late. Mel Poffett at the 25-yard line, hit by Gene Gaines, and it should be a first foul. The gain is 12, and they move the yardsticks for Toronto. 12-minute mark of the first quarter. Let's score again is Toronto 8 and Ottawa nothing. Say, build a better mousetrap, and the world will lead a path to your door. But they're wrong. Because just building that better mousetrap isn't enough. You're going to have to beat a path to the world. The marketplace. But that's something your average better mousetrap builder may need a little help with. Expert help. The kind you get from CP Rail. We don't just move goods. We move them to the right place at the right time. We'll even design special equipment if it will help you get to that new market in Canada or beyond. So you build your better mousetrap or your better anything else. We're ready to help you beat a path to the marketplace. CP Rail, another way Canadian Pacific serves you. I guess one of the best ways to control the Ottawa offense is not let them have the ball, and the Argonauts have done a pretty good job on that. Through the early minutes of this first quarter, we have 2.56 left, and Toronto with a first down at their own 25-yard line, leading by an 8-0 score. Bobby Taylor, 24, breaks early from the huddle and heads for the right side. And Jim Thorpe, number 20, comes left. Ramey and Simons in the backfield. Simon. <laughs> Trying to stay in bounds along the sidelines and finally steps out with a little help from Joe Poirier. To indicate the edge the Argonauts have had offensively, they've run 15 plays from scrimmage is against seven for the Rough Riders. The gain that time was six yards. They'll be second and four from the 31. Simon set left. Ottawa ball. Doug Collins made the recovery. I'm looking to think I'm short on this. And he doesn't have a chance to throw the ball. Just as he gets ready to throw the ball, Campbell backs off and knocks the ball loose. And there's a scramble for the ball, but you see big Doug Collins jumping on the ball for the recovery. Oh, Mark Pete Markle. Mark I'm sorry, Pete Markle. Doug Collins was not in there. So from the 20-yard line, the Riders make a big break for themselves in a first down. of a break, a big break. This is what normally a great professional quarterback will do. Come right back on a big bomb, and he did to his speedster number 73, Margie Atkins, on a corner pattern. And let's watch this play. He beat a man with pretty good speed of his own, Jimmy Tomlin, 23. The convert attempt is good, marker throw. And it will be against the Toronto Argonauts by the indication. And the Rough Riders converts fan. Last night in Ottawa, we attended a reception marking the launching of a new book. That book is called The Profile of a Pro. and is the biography of Ottawa's Russ Jackson. The author is the Ottawa sports columnist and CBC broadcaster Eddie McCabe. 
And one of the reasons that book was written is just because of plays and passes you saw just a moment ago with Jackson throwing to Margene Atkins. Tom, this game is turning out to be all it was billed to be. From the 45, the Rough Riders getting set to kick off. Southern preparing the ball there. They now trail Toronto by just a single point. 8-7 with a minute and 44 left in the quarter. What do you score from 14 Ramey awaiting the kickoff? He slipped to the 25 and then pinned there by number 60, Wayne Smith. After getting it back 21 yards. First test of speed, man on man, running back to cover Jimmy Tomlin against Margene Atkins has been won by Atkins with that touchdown throw. <laughs> Ramey was collared by Gene Gaines. After he moved the ball seven yards to 32. <laughs> Minute 16 remaining now in the first quarter. 8 7, Toronto over Ottawa. And there is not a vacant seat in Lansdowne Park. Wilkinson with the second down call. Simon gets across the 40 for the first down with Van Berkleyo defending for Ottawa. Bill Simons is playing his first game since signing that three-year contract earlier this week, and it obviously is having a psychological effect on him. He looks better than he's looked all season. And the fact that Simons has pledged himself to the Argonauts for that long a period is uh, pretty good for the general team situation as well. The uncertainty has now been removed. Bobby Taylor, after a bump with Southern, Southern protested, incomplete, no marker thrown. Scrambling Tom Wilkinson with that pass. There's a little bump there. Southern just can't quite hit the ball. But on that particular play, in order to get that ball off, there had to be a great block by number 14, Dave Ramey, to get Tom Wilkinson outside that we didn't see. And it was fairly clear, too, that the uh, both players going for the ball. And the bump no more serious than that. Oh, <laughs> profit. Did not get turned around in time. And that's it, either an early release or a cross-up in pattern. Bernie, what likely causes that? Well, uh, one, pressure from the outside and throwing the ball before you're ready, and two, your receiver not getting out fast enough. 20 seconds remaining as Dave Mann sets the punt on third and 10. <laughs> Billy Cooper, 17. <laughs> Brings it back five, the 22-yard line. Be time for one play. Barring penalty, Mel Profit made the tackle. That's one play in the first quarter. A man's punt, and he's among the best in pro football on both sides of the border, 51 yards. Number 65, Vernon Van Oy, knows that this is the game the Argo coaching staff expects a good deal from him because he was recruited with Russ Jackson and the explosive Ottawa offense in mind. Stewart. A marker had been thrown as the play unraveled. Tomlin and Lurd were back to make the tackle, but the indication is against the Ottawa Rough Riders. Leading the line just a split second too soon. Pete Martin comes over to exercise the Argo option. And they walk five. Signal from Harry Ross is offside against the Rough Riders. 
Ball at the 17. They will be first and 15 from there. That penalty means the quarter can't end on that note. So one more play. Doug Speck at center for the Rough Riders, number 43. Fredrickson Schutte of the guard. Bainan Braggins the tackle. Pullen and Adkins the end. Lorenz brought him down, and Jimmy Tomlin must be wondering how Adkins ever caught the football. At the end of the first quarter, the score is Toronto 8, Ottawa 7. We'll return to CFL action after this message. If you were going to take a trip and you phoned our reserve room service before you left, you'd stay at Le Chateau Champlain in Montreal. stay at the Royal York in Toronto. And you'd stay at the Banff Springs Hotel in the Rockies. No matter where you're going, a phone call to CP Hotels Reserve Room gets you a great room with great meals and great service. Not only in any one of the 11 CP hotels across Canada, but also in any of over 20 affiliated hotels in Canada, the U.S., or Europe. CP Hotels Reserve Room. Our way of getting you a lot of hotel in a lot of cities with one simple phone call. CP Hotels. Another way Canadian Pacific serves you. Russ Jackson moving this Ottawa club on that tremendous reception by Margie Atkins. And Tomlin, we mentioned, uh, must be talking to himself as to how he got the ball. He lost the gamble. He decided to, rather than knock it down, go for the football in the clear downfield area to run. And it's either all or nothing in that case. So the Rough Riders have the ball between the 48 and the 49, their own, and come out first down. Tom Pullen caught by Pete Martin across the 50 for about five. Bobby Taylor with quarterback Tom Wilkinson. In the first quarter, the total offense, this is net offense, deducting the losses incurred by the quarterbacks, and Jackson lost 14 yards and one charge by Marvin Luster and company. 134 yards for Toronto and 43 for the Rough Riders. Argonauts have moved the ball along the ground for 105 yards against only eight for Ottawa. <laughs> Delay of game. Too long coming out with the play. Mike Wadsworth and uh, Speck, number 43, were having a little set tee down there. That a little bit too long to get the playoff, but they still decided to have a little go at one another. Just to keep warm. The ball is at the 47, the five-yard penalty. Second and 11. Vic Washington through his hands with Luster covering at center field. Jackson's getting a pretty good rush on occasion, but he's only been caught for once and has become a good deal more mobile, it seems, since that experience. He's still having to pass that ball a lot uh, quicker than normal, though, Don. 34 is Sternberg and 32 even. The punt return team back at the Argo 15 for Bill Van Berkeley's kick which will come near the Ottawa 40. Mike even ducks under Perdrick, who finally pins him at the 34-yard line, and the Argonauts will have the ball in play right there. A sellout here, 27,500 in Civic uh, Center at Lansdowne Park, and everybody in this park is seeing football today as we see some quite amazing quarterbacking from both uh, quarterbacks in this game. They're moving the ball all over the field. Everybody in the field is getting a look. No question, this is CFL football at its very best.
Bobby Taylor, the intended pass receiver, left early, and the Argonauts are being called for offside. That was an excellent call by Wilkinson, too, Don, because they were in a blitz type of a situation. They kept maximum protection in and had a man-for-man -man deep backfield area with Bobby Taylor and Bill Van Berkleyo. Taylor was open, the ball was overthrown, but Argonauts are offside. It has been declined by the Rough Riders. Rather than make it first and 15, they uh, cost the Argonauts a down, second and 10, from where they were at the 34. Taylor and Thorpe both break to the right. Bill Simons, wide left. And Dave Rainey reaches the 38-yard line for about four. Doug Collins, number 66, met him there. The Argonauts will be third down and six. It is 8-7 Toronto. If each score to convert a touchdown, the difference being a long single by Dave Mann. Just over two minutes gone in quarter two. <laughs> Cooper finally with the ball. Extending to Barry Ardern. And Bill Simon makes the tackle way back inside the Rough Rider 15. The return was a minus 10 after Mann's 51-yard kick. What is scrimmage will be the 13-yard line between the 12 and 13. These teams play again next Saturday in Toronto. c &E Stadium is a complete seller. <laughs> Dick Thornton finally grabbing Ronnie Stewart from behind at the 17-yard line on the extension from Russ Jackson. Jackson's using a lot of that option series in this game, and the reason being is because they're trying to contain him outside, and if he can get a fake into the inside to bring the tight end in or the defensive end and then draw the corner to him, he can get one of his fast backs outside. Second and five with Tucker right. Adkins coming out as the split left end. Quick count. Jackson's throw under pressure for fullback Jim Mankins. Incomplete. And it runs the third and five rough riders. The pressure on Jackson coming from Mike Bloom. Argonauts outside linebacker. 32 even, 34 Sternberg of the Argonaut 45 for the third down punt. Three and a half minutes gone in the second quarter, 8-7 Toronto. Mike Eben finds his opening, crosses center field down to the Ottawa 53. Don't forget the British Columbia Lions meet the Calgary Stampeders in Calgary tonight. That game will be televised on the CBC Western Network starting at 8 o'clock Calgary time. People may be wondering why Tom Wilkinson on the last series of down on a second and eighth situation ran a handoff uh, to Dave Ramey. I think this is a good call occasionally to keep the linemen and linebackers uh, in there. Taylor left early again. Pass to Paul Barkley. There's another flag over on the near side. It uh, may be concerned with the same infraction. I suppose this crowd, uh, with the kind of noise they're generating, Bernie, would make it tough for a wide flanker like Taylor to hear the signals properly? It would make it tough for him to hear the signals properly, but he should be watching in, and he shouldn't leave that line of scrimmage until that ball is snapped. Uh, probably, probably the adrenaline's moving pretty well, too. Eh? This is it. This is your excited. It's a key ball game, and everybody's keyed up and wants to get out and do the best they possibly can. Opening for Wilkinson, and it's closed in at the 46-yard line by Gene Gaines and Ken Lehman. 
The Rough Riders again uh, declined that last offside penalty to take away an Argonaut down, and now uh, holding them on the second down. Argonauts are in a third down situation once more. Third and four. And the 47 yard line, the point of scrimmage, is well beyond Dave Mann's field goal range, so he will punt to our Durham 20 and Cooper 23. Our Durham 5. Tagged by Markle at the 10 yard line. The Rough Riders, Bernie, are being pinned deep on uh, these exchanges, and yet the Argonauts can't seem to move in when they have the ball. The five-minute mark of the second quarter, then the score is Toronto 8 and Ottawa 7. Hello, I'm Fred Davis, and I'm here to introduce one of the busiest men in Canadian television, Pierre Burton. Thanks, Fred. One of the things that keeps me busy is trying to keep pace with that irreplaceable, unpredictable, and cantankerous dean of broadcast journalism, Gordon Sinclair. Well, I can always count on you to say something nice about me, Pierre, but you know, really, I'm not so uh, hard to keep track of at all. You can always find me here sitting next to the most charming of all Canadian broadcasters, Betty Kennedy. Here she is. Thank you, Gordon. Well, this is where I'm supposed to introduce the person next to me, but you know, I really can't because I never know from week to week who that person is going to be. So I guess this is the place to turn you back over to Fred Davis. Well, we do have a guest panelist each week, and the panel is asked to track down the stories and identify the challengers who help make headline history. So join us every Monday night when CBC Television presents Front Page Challenge in Color. We're looking at uh, a few of the 17 buses that brought Argonaut fans 650 strong to Ottawa for this game this afternoon. In fact, many of them, not necessarily Argonaut fans, are sitting in the aisles. This place is filled to capacity and beyond. Hard contact inside. Vic Washington met by Marvin Luster, number 27. Pete Martin, 77. Might mention there'll be another contingent, except in reverse, as a large contingent from Ottawa will be going to Toronto next Saturday. And by the way, that is a Saturday night game, starting at 8 o'clock next Saturday night at the CNE Stadium, and our CBC color cameras will be there. The Argonauts were offside defensively on that last play, and the Rough Riders accept the penalty, which brings it to, to a first and five situation at the 15. Adkins, 73 right, Tucker, 26 left. Tucker covered by Dick Thornton. Jim Mankin. Reaches the 20-yard line and should be close to a first down. But it looks as though they'll be just a little short. He had to be across the 20, and they spot the ball closer to the 19. So about a yard to go. The official announced attendance, paid attendance, 26,000. 989 on Ottawa this afternoon. And while capacity is 27,004, uh, it's difficult to pinpoint any vacancies here. Russ Jackson on the sneak across the 20 will have the first down. Argos have scored a touchdown by Bill Simon. The Rough Riders and a pass from Jackson to Margene Atkins. The difference being Dave Mann single, the first scoring point of the game. We now have eight minutes and 20 seconds to play until halftime. Washington can't elude Ron Arans with a good first tackle at the 39-yard line, but it's an Ottawa first down with room to spare. The gain is 17 yards.
Margene Atkins. But there is a marker back at the line of scrimmage. Jackson has all the time in the world to throw this ball. The Argonauts put up a three-man line defense, but look at Jackson get belted from behind by number 54, Ed Harrington. And that is the nature of the infraction. Roughing the quarterback, the Rough Riders get the gain on the pass to Atkins. And the yardage for roughing will be added on. The ball at the 24 of Toronto in Ottawa with a first down and an excellent chance to go in to score. 7 17 left. The Rough Riders controlling more of the play now. They've narrowed the gap offensively with 21 plays run from scrimmage against 26 for the Argonauts. The difference much greater earlier. Atkins with Tomlin 23 covering, even with his great speed, did not get out of the pass from Jackson. Second and 10 at the 24. Here's a contest to watch today between these two, Tomlin and Margene Atkins. On the last play, Atkins came out of Tomlin's coverage zone to the far side and got loose for the long gain. He got them this far. Tomlin was assigned elsewhere. But in the main, when Atkins goes deep, those fly patterns of his, it will be Jim Tomlin covering. The Rough Riders fled at the left side with three downfield receivers through to the short man, Washington, but he couldn't make the catch. Tucker, Adkins, and Washington all spread toward the end zone on that left side. That's enough to give the defense a bit of a nervous condition. So the Rough Riders stalled twice. Our third and 10 between the 24 and 25, and Southern from the 32-yard line with Jackson Holding will attempt the field goal that could put them in front. playing volleyball out there. The ball goes to the Argonauts because no matter who picked it up, the required yardage for the first down was not attained. This shows the aggressiveness out there, Don, with the uh, that type of rush to block a attempted field goal because normally you, you at least get the ball off. So the Argonauts actually wind up gaining two on the play to their 26. Harrington with the hands up to block the field goal. For Thorpe. No good as he bumped with Southern going up for the ball and was taken off balance. Five minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the second quarter. It is still 8-7. CBC Television will have all three Ottawa-Toronto games in full color for you throughout this 1969 season. The next being this coming Saturday evening, a week from tonight, before a sellout crowd in Toronto. Wilkinson got away from Billy Joe Booth, and then at the 32-yard line was finally dropped. Some real contact in there. Don Southern and Gene Gaines bringing him down. The gain was about six. It's quite a recovery for Billy Joe Booth because he was knocked to his knees by Mel Crawford to allow Wilkinson to get out there, and he did recover and came back to make that tackle. Wilkinson at the bench, missing the first down by four. Dave Mann set the kick to Ardern and Cooper. Billy Cooper at the 37. And 
Bill Simons finally tags him after a great punt return, but there is a marker down. What a football game. There's Billy Cooper on his punt return, and he looks like he's just going to step up in this center pocket and maybe make five or seven yards, but he turns it on right away at this point until number 33, Bill Simons, grabs a hold of him and just grabs him. The penalty against Toronto has been declined by Ottawa. They will take the ball at the point Cooper brought it to, the 41. The return was 31 yards. Dave Mann's punt is shortest today, carried 40, and so the net exchange is only nine. The Rough Riders moving offensively with 15 plays from scrimmage in this quarter alone. With five minutes left, they had 12 in the entire first quarter. First tackle from Jim Tomlin brings him down at the 37-yard line. That'll be a four-yard advance, six to come on second down. The atmosphere comparable to that of a Grey Cup game here this afternoon. Atkins and Washington right Washington in the slot and again Jackson is called for taking too long to get the play away the lay of game penalty that's the second time the riders have been cut for delay of game Second and ten, as the Argonauts have declined the penalty. Loss of a down. Washington. Touchdown. Vic Washington, number 27. As we talked about his explosive style, his great runner, and as a pass receiver, Jackson hits him on a dead run. What's the ability to stay in bounds as he tight ropes down that sideline? Has to fight to stay in, but he does for an outstanding touchdown. That was awfully close as he tight roped down the sidelines, the convert from Southern. It is blocked by Alan Ray Aldridge, number 44. It is 13 to 8, 351 until halftime. The official on that last play was leaning down, looking right along the line as Washington ran toward the end zone and was right on top of the play. Probably the reason for those the calls, uh, delay of the game, or too much time in a huddle, or not getting a playoff in time by Russ Jackson, happened to him twice today, is that uh, Leo Kale's defense is being mixed up back there or disguised so that Jackson can't read it. And therefore, he's trying to audible at the line of scrimmage, and in doing so, he's taking too much time to read that defense. 14 Ramey, 20 Thorpe, to receive the kickoff from Southern. Past Ramey. And the Riders get the equivalent of the convert they missed on the kickoff. With the bad bounce, the kickoff traveled 75 yards, and it's 14 to 8. They bring the ball to the 25, and the Argonauts will be first down at that point. Taylor to the right, Thorpe left. Southern out to cover, Bobby Taylor.
Abe Ramey has six yards to the 31. Marshall Shirt, number 53, brought him down. Second and four. And Mel Profit on the Argo bounce gets the ball back. Rule as a reception, then a fumble, and back into the hands of Mel Profit. It's a first down at the 37 yard line. You don't get a point for it, but at least it makes up for that ball that went uh, into the end zone. At the 12 minute mark of the second quarter, the score is Ottawa 14 and Toronto 8. In June of 1752, Ben Franklin learned a thing or two. Old Ben took a kite of cedar ribs covered with silk along its jibs, topped it with a pointed wire, and was ready for the lightning fire. With a key held to a silken thread, old Ben threw the kite to a thunderhead. Ben Franklin proved electricity's plan, but that same old Ben was a lucky man. When you're flying a kite, just remember this to give storms and power lines a miss. Don't fly your kite near hydro towers or your friends will be sending you lily flowers. Hey, enjoy your fun, but enjoy it right by finding a free space to fly your kite. That way you find that you'll be free to live much better electrically. The Argonauts are more effective running than passing today. Wilkinson has been good on three of eight for 35 yards. Russ Jackson has hit on eight of 14 for 162. But Wilkinson breaking out of the pass pocket and running, along with Bill Simons and Dave Ramey, have told the big story along the ground. Too far for Jim Thorpe near midfield. Wilkinson now is three for nine. Two minutes and 35 seconds remain on the second quarter. 14 to eight, Ottawa in the lead. will have a first down at the 48-yard line. And Berkeley Owen Lehman stopped him. The game was 11. Mike Eben, number 32, comes in for Jim Thorpe. Taylor and Eben both go left. Ramey contained that the 50 by Marshall Shirk. The game is two to three. I got out second down. Let's make it eight to go. That's the play Ramey traveled 48 yards to score on against Saskatchewan. Joe Poirier missed Bobby Taylor, who went all the way down to the 25-yard line. Finally, Van Berkelio supplied the tackle. Put the ball to the 26. Wilkinson with a lot of time to throw. Bobby Taylor on a breakout pattern, stops up, but what's the move after he catches the ball? He's an elusive little guy. He gets it, missed tackle, and makes a play out of a an outstanding play out of a play that should have been uh, tackled. Sends Bill Simon inside to the 23.
Marshall Shirt in the bottom of that pile. Mike Even again with a message as uh, Thorpe comes out, number 20. Even's 32. Clock shows a minute and 23 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Sutherland! Was cut down by Mike Even after he won the wrestling match with Bobby Taylor, who's arguing. John Sutherland adding to his league record with another interception pulls this ball right out of the hands. It is a wrestling match, you say, and watch this tackle as he gets the ball and starts running back. John Southern doesn't see. He doesn't see the, the uh, defender come in. He, we didn't get that one. He's kind of shaken up as you see him walking towards the sidelines. That's number 48 for him as he continues to fatten that career record. Taylor was complaining about interference with the two wrestling for the ball and games coming in there. Ellington. Right through on Jackson again. Minute flag. Up in the second quarter. 46 seconds left. The loss was five, second and 15. Dave Braggins, number 55, at the left of the picture. On offense, having switched because of injuries from his defensive end post. Deck to Washington. Fumble the ball. Argos, first and touchdown to go. Aldridge, Dick Aldridge, made the fumble recovery, and he's unhappy he couldn't score. A game of breaks, and here they are. They had to hold on to this football. And Vic Washington trying to get outside is hit hard. The ball squirts out. There it is, all alone, and Dick Aldridge picks it up and has a clear shot to the end zone, but can't quite get in there. From the one. Fumble. Marshall Shirk 53 against Wilkinson and the Argonauts will retain possession. Wilkinson got it back himself. 11 seconds remaining. Signal thrown by the official of touchdown. The Rough Riders protesting Joe Poirier. Doing uh, the talking for them with Gene Gaines, but it's on the board as Simons is in. 14 to 14, the tie-breaking convert attempt from Dave Mann. Frank Cosentino the hall. Outside Ottawa. No signal that the convert was successful. It was not, and the Argonauts will get a second chance. This one is good. We have four seconds remaining until halftime in this classic battle between the Ottawa Rough Riders and the Toronto Argonauts. Toronto leads by a point, 15 to 14.
time we get the stats at half time, I would imagine it'll be pretty well even in terms of total offense the way the Rough Riders have bounced back in the second quarter. The battle between Ramey and Washington Ramey, while not overwhelmingly spectacular, is the leader. He has 36 yards, and Washington has lost seven yards in his two carries today. And of course, that costly fumble that led to the Argonaut touchdown. Dave Mann, the Argonaut kickoff specialist. Riders have Washington and Adkins back at the five. Ken Lehman, as man, used the soccer style to keep the ball away from the deep threat Vic Washington. And Marv Luster made the tackle on Lehman. One second remaining. Time for one play. The ball is at the 42 and a half yard line. 30 yards was man's kickoff, designed to be short. Realizing the time left the play and countering the threat of the deep speed Ottawa had stationed at the five. Tucker and Stewart come this way. Fullback Jim Mankin crosses the 50 yard line on the final play of the second quarter of the most exciting CFL game so far in 1969. The score is Toronto 15, Ottawa 14. And we'll return with our halftime show after this message. Here's one of your favorite people. Hi, I'm Greg Morris. You know, great shows don't just happen. They take a solid cast, fine technicians, writers, producers, and directors to make them. I've been fortunate to work for these past seasons with such a combination. That's why Mission Impossible has built such a large and devoted audience. If you haven't been a regular viewer, I think you've been missing something. Because television has been described by some as a vast wasteland. But his shows such as ours help build in that vast wasteland. Mission Impossible helps to fulfill dreams. Dreams of adventure and excitement. The stories of espionage and suspense. It fulfills dreams and it builds spirit. Join Peter Graves as the leader of our IMF force and me, Greg Morris, for Mission Impossible Friday night, where you see us first on the CBC television network. For you action lovers, it's Mission Impossible making its seasonal premiere on CBOT Friday, September 26th. Tom McKee back in Ottawa, and that's as exciting a football game as you're ever going to see. And as we've shown before during our halftime shows, it takes many people performing many jobs to keep a football team operating smoothly. Another important cog in the wheel, of course, is the trainer. And his duties are described now by the new trainer of the Toronto Argonauts this season, Stan Wilson. Here's Stan. Theories that I have as far as athletic training is concerned uh, boil down to more of basic approaches to the physiological problems and also the psychological problems of the human body. Number one is to slow down the process of physiological uh, overdoing of the body. In case of a sprain, usually you get your swelling, which causes the splinting. And the psychological problem is you find that with a knee injury, all it leaves an athlete with the problem of wondering about his future. Now, the only way we can do anything as far as in either one of these is to make both of them feel comfortable. Now, through the use of cold, which is the only way that I know of, I find that physiologically I can go ahead and accomplish exactly what I want. And as far as the psychological problem, we find that cold has a feeling. You can feel this, like with uh, other forms of treatment, you find that many times they cannot feel it, yet they're getting some good out of it. And by doing this, we are stopping all the apprehension, the anxieties of the athlete, and we also, mentally, we slow down a lot of the body processes as well. And today, our patient will be uh, Bobby Taylor. And Bobby, uh, can you give me a little action with the Bob and show me exactly the spot where you got it? Right in there. Okay, right in that rotator cuff. Yeah. Bobby here has a, um, has a slight injury to the rotator cuff which keeps the, quite a bit of the head of the humerus in and uh, stops him from being a quarterback because he can't throw the ball too well with one of these. The first thing we do, of course, with this is to go ahead and, 
and apply cold. Now, we have two methods. We have the, the, the old-fashioned method, which works real, real well, and that's the, the ice bag. And apply this, and many times, it depends upon the nature of it, we probably apply this for at least, uh, at least two hours. And many times, and we send the player home with an ice bag and with instructions to go ahead and use it. And usually you find that with a pro ball player will go ahead and do this, anything that you ask them to do is because of the fact this is livelihood. Now, the use of ethyl chloride is a refrigerant, and it becomes a refrigerant as a result of its uh, expanding in the air. When we spray this, we actually cool this down much faster than you can with ice. And we find that one way to diagnose an area that is injured the most, you find because of the heat of the area and the ex quick expansion of the gas caused a frosted spot possibly right in here in Bobby's case. And then we know exactly what area that we want to work in. Now, as we keep using the cold, we find that we have to stop at certain times because we don't want to injure the top cells of the body uh, by uh, getting them too cold and then also giving them frostbite. In many cases with ice, uh, you're much better off to go ahead and, and uh, use a wet towel or a wet rag of some type underneath and then put your ice over it and then you don't get what we call a frostbite. And many times the frostbite sometimes end up worse than the uh, injury itself because it doesn't heal very well, the same as a burn. Okay, Bobby, we'll put some ultrasound on it. Now, we're going to the ultrasound machine next in order to go ahead and vibrate the cells and, and create a better circulation and to break up any barriers that may have been built up by the body, such as coagulated blood, uh, possibly a constriction of various uh, of the small arterioles and venules that are in here. And also, try and create a better lymph circulation. By doing all of these three things, we find that we end up automatically doing a fourth one. We find that sound has a very soothing effect as far as the uh, nervous system is concerned. With sound, you have completely inaudible sound goes up to about to about a million vibrations per second and the basic part of it though is the vibration of the cells and clearing out of the uh well if you want to call it bad blood okay bobby the next thing we'll do is get the muscle stimulator and begin with that get these muscles working now the muscle stimulator is a, is a machine that gives an electrical stimulation to the to the nerve, and in turn the nerve operates the muscle without the help of the individual. And as we go on, we find the tolerance of the individual and then we begin. And by doing this, I can exercise the muscle even though he finds pain in, in exercising himself and he'll find less pain in doing this. Now we may do this probably for uh, five, 10 minutes. It just depends upon what we are trying to do. Injury that Bobby has is a fairly minor one, but should we get to a one that is major, we refer this to our team physician who prescribes not only the treatment, but the proper drugs that are necessary, if necessary, and then, from then on, we follow his instructions. The score is Toronto 15 and Ottawa 14, and we'll continue with our halftime show after this message. Have you ever been tempted to cheat the government out of some of that tax money they keep taking away from you? Sure you have. We all feel that way sometimes. After all, it's a very human temptation. But the consequences can be grisly. But you know, there is a way to do it. And it's very simple. Just quit smoking. You know, for every pack you don't smoke, you rob the government of 25 cents in taxes. And furthermore, it's perfectly legal. <laughs> Canadian professional football. This portion brought to you by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation for the best in television sports coverage across Canada every season.
This is the CBC Television Network. Canadian professional football. This portion brought to you by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation for the best in television sports coverage across Canada every season. The story of the facts and figures from that first 30 minutes of football pretty well coincide with the score. Toronto leading by just one point as we get ready to start the second half. Toronto having the advantage along the ground and of course Ottawa the advantage uh, in the air. Interesting to note that Ottawa has picked up only one first down on the ground and they've uh, accumulated only 19 full yards while at the same time Jackson lost 19 yards in attempting to pass. Uh, in the passing department is five for 12 and eight for 14. Taylor and profit for Toronto catching a total of four and good for 68 yards combined. Washington at three for 86 including one touchdown and Margene Atkins for Ottawa at three for 69 that also included one of those all important touchdowns and of course we've had two key fumbles out of that first half as well. The score is Toronto 15 and Ottawa 14 and we'll continue with our halftime show after this message. To say that children like animals has got to be an understatement. Just visit a zoo and watch the faces of any of the youngsters there. You will see a love for life as you have never seen. But children are like that. Their affections are deeply felt. Whether it's an animal or a bird in a zoo, a dog in the street or playing a game, their whole lives are made up of loving. And that is what is so important to our children's department at the CBC. We try to understand children and help them to keep on loving. We do it by making programs especially for them. Programs that are both fun and educational. Encourage your children to watch CBC Children's Shows. One of the key parts of this football game from that first 30 minutes is the fact that Ottawa has so far been able to uh, contain Dave Ramey quite well. The statistics show that he's picked up a total yardage of only 37 and he's had eight carries. Well, Bernie Filoni, that could be a key to this whole game. It is a key of the game right at this point because we talked about Dave Ramey being the explosive runner and receiver uh, against Vic Washington. And of course, uh, let's take a look and see what has happened with the uh, contain of Dave Ramey. He's been able to get outside a little bit, but he hasn't been able to break through on the uh, blocking. And of course, the flow of the defensive club follows Ramey and uh, they just won't let him get loose. There's good blocking up front by his forward guards pulling out, but look at the scramble all around. They're sort of after him, aren't they? They're really <laughs> after him. But here is an excellent run, an excellent blocking up front by Scale, Swift and Bray, 51, three and 57. But number 33, Bill Simons on his first touchdown run, breaks the tackle on number 22, Gene Gaines to get into that end zone for the touchdown. Breaks mean ball games and a fumble by Wilkinson. Watch number 54, Jerry Campbell, spinning off a block and the ball's knocked loose and a scramble after the ball by Markle 76 and Collins 66. And Collins recovers the football. Looked like Markle was in there, but he just didn't get there fast enough. Didn't I get guess. it. And here's what happens after plays like this. Jackson comes right back and he looks for number 73, his fast, speedy, Receiver, flanker, and he beats 23 Tomlin in the end zone there for a touchdown, the first touchdown. Washington, we talked about his running and his receiving, and look at this play. Washington, watch, watch how he stays in here. I thought he was going to go out of bound or out of uh, out of touch here. Well, great effort as he tight ropes down that sidelines and looks like he's going to get out of bounds, but he just gets his one leg inside that flag, and that's all you need. That's a touchdown. A fumble recovered by Aldridge, and look at the forward blocking here of the left side of the Argonaut line to allow Bill Simons, number 33, to get into the end zone for that second touchdown. So wedge in there, Tom, and that was evident of this type of uh, play. I was also surprised that Russ Jackson was called there twice for taking too long. 
Well, he did, but I think he was trying to audible at the line of scrimmage. And uh, Coach K. Hill had his defenses disguised pretty well. And, of course, when you do that, you take a little more time to try to read whether it's his own or man-to-man -man defense. Okay, Bernie, the score is Toronto 15 and Ottawa 14. And we'll return with the second half kickoff in just a moment. Sir, we'd like to make a deal with you. Huh? If you promise not to throw your garbage on the highways, we'll promise not to dump our garbage on your driveway. <laughs> and remember... Colony Tom McKee, spotter Art Darch, and statistician Ron Andrews. Ottawa, where one point separates the Ottawa Rough Riders and the Toronto Argonauts with the Argos on the heavy end of the score, 15 to 14, as they get warmed up to come back out for the second half. There's no need to impress upon you how tight the Eastern Conference race is and how important today's game is. Hamilton, 11 points, Ottawa 10, Toronto 10, a seesaw battle, and with the Hamilton Tiger Cats going into their second Western game tomorrow against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at Taylor Field, Regina, it will continue to be topsy-turvy right throughout the weekend with these three teams vying for first place. The only team out of the race, to all intents and purposes, Montreal Alouettes with two points, two ties, and seven games. This game today also marks the halfway point of the 1969 season for both the Rough Riders and the Argonauts, their seventh game in a 14-game schedule. Of course, tonight, the BC Lions play in Calgary, and our Western viewers will see that game along the Western Network. Tomorrow, Hamilton at Saskatchewan, Winnipeg playing in Edmonton. And next Saturday, the return match at c &E Stadium in Toronto between the Argos and Rough Riders, with c &E, as early as last Monday, totally sold out for that game. The Rough Riders getting set to receive, and Dave Mann making preparations for the kickoff to launch the second half. R. Gene Atkins, number 73, and Vic Washington, number 27, going back to receive. Dick Aldridge, number 31, met him. Toronto ran 37 plays against 27 for Ottawa in the first half. With the Argonauts enjoying an overall, or insisting on an overall uh, rushing edge, 20 running plays against 12 passing. The others were all putting plays. Jim Mankins has eight to nine yards at the 46. Mike Bloom and Ed Harrington with the Toronto tackles. He's within a yard of first down range, second and one. Second and one yard to go. Veteran setters Sellinger over the ball. And Aldridge, it appeared, may have been guilty of offside. Offside, Toronto Argos. The offside penalty has been declined. The Rough Riders take the game to the 54-yard line and go first down from there. Just starting the third quarter. 15-14 for Toronto. Tucker, 26 to the right. Atkins, a good catch at the 45. Slightly 
underthrown, but what a recovery. Obviously, some adjustments at halftime. Uh, that's the first time we've seen Russ Jackson bootleg to the short side of the field and throw it that quickly. Uh, he may be trying to uh, call the plays now rather than to uh, dance with that disguised Argonaut defense. Frank Clare and Bob Ward, two thirds of the Rough Rider coaching staff. Third man, Jack Gutta, up in the spotter's booth. First down at the 45. For Washington, 27 on 27, Luster covering. And again, Jackson was given pretty good pressure back there by Vernon Van Oy, number 65, the left defensive end. Second and 10. Toronto 45. There's Vernon Van Oy, 6'8, 280 pounds. And while Vernon has a lot to learn, he has learned rapidly through six games. He's developing nicely. As a defensive end. Rookie from Kansas, played both football and basketball there. Don, there's a penalty down there, a penalty flag down, and uh, I think it's on Ed Harrington. It's number 54, but let's watch it. Ed Harrington, close line, number 27, Vic Washington. There it is. You see, just takes him by the head and throws him right down, and that's one way to keep a receiver out of there, but it's also being caught and putting your team in a very vulnerable position. The penalty moves the ball to the 30-yard line, and the Riders are first down there. Jackson determined to get the ball away, almost had it picked off. Jimmy Tomlin with another great interception chance. Type of play like that, I'm surprised, uh, really, but I, it, it indicates the, the tension or the desire to keep moving that football. Normally, Russ Jackson would have held on and taken his loss gracefully, but he must be keyed up out there also today, man. Penalties have played a big part in this game. The Argonauts have been penalized for a total of 60 yards now against 15 for the Ottawa Rough Riders. Second and 10 from the 30. Tom Pullen with Luster covering at the goal line. Incomplete. Let's take a look at that coverage. Uh, Marvin Lester, a real speedster, moving out there, but Tom Pullen actually has Marvin beat because Lester turns his back, and this ball is just underthrown a bit, and even at that, Pullen has a chance to get it. Don Southern is going to attempt a field goal from the 37, angle left. The Rough Riders regain the lead. The first points of the second half, and they have 17 is against 15 for Toronto. They played three minutes and 10 seconds. At the three minute mark, then, of the third quarter, the score is Ottawa 17 and Toronto 15. Who is that ringing an empty phone book? I know what it is. It's a beautiful spy girl. The enemy's captured her, taken her to an abandoned warehouse where they've locked her in. Guards fallen asleep. She's knocked the phone off the hook, dialed a number at random, and that's the number. It's a deep. Hello? Beautiful spy girl. You know what's wrong with me. Wanna play another game? I play you all day. We play the best, the best two out of three, and this time, you have no point, no edge whatsoever. Straight game of 20. I'm going to put my sneakers on, and it's my ball. 20 nothing, I win. Well, I'm 
Laugh lovers, stand by for the Bill Cosby Show Thursdays on CBC Television. There's Vernon Van Oy, number 65. He's tall, even sitting on the bench. And Don, as you know, when you stand in the elevator with him, he's already one floor ahead. <laughs> You'll have to build some aircraft uh, a, a little bigger, too, because Vernon has a little trouble scraping his head along the roof there as he finds a seat. All right, 17 to 15, 6 8. Vernon Van Oy, impressive rookie with the Argonauts. Last year's Good outstanding job, CFL feet. player, Good Bill Simon. Tackled by Gene Gaines, and the advance is three, second and seven. Simon broke for the first touchdown of the game on his longest run from scrimmage this year, 30 yards in the first half. Cooper with a stout defensive job on the long throw for Simon. That was an excellent defensive play by number 23, Billy Cooper, as the ball was thrown almost perfectly, and he jumps up and knocks the ball away just at the nick of time. I think that Simon thought he had that one for all the way. There we are during field of the ball after Billy Cooper had lost the flight in the sun. About this time of the afternoon, the sun at the west end of Lansdowne Park is shining directly in this quarter in the eyes of the Ottawa Rough Riders. The return was eight yards, the punt carried 55, and it's first down at the 25 for Ottawa. It's only speculation, but maybe Ramey also had trouble with that sun, plus the bad bounce, and which gave Ottawa that what could be a very important point. Jim Tomlin hit Ronnie Stewart first, and he uh, was able to sustain momentum across the 30-yard line for a gain of six yards on that play. Second and four. And there's no doubt with uh, representatives from both sides, Ottawa fans in the main and 650 from Toronto, that uh, feelings are running high and emotions in that direction as well. Here is the second half. Sustains the tremendous start these teams got. Flags fly. Wadsworth is in with Aldridge. Washington not getting on track. Aldridge throws his hands up in despair. So that gives you a pretty good indication that this will be against the Toronto Argonauts. Ed Harrington was offsides on that play. He jumped across the line of scrimmage. He was anxious to get in there. I think he had read something in the backfield. And we see him up there. He's uh, offside, definitely. That gives Ottawa a first down. <laughs> Alan Ray Aldridge missed, fortunately, with a haymaker on Jim Mankin. The tackle finally was made more conventionally at the 50-yard line. The gain was 16 at its first down for the Rough Riders. Jackson. And he just throws the ball. Uh, the Argonauts claim he threw it away. And they rule it is thrown to an ineligible receiver. Aldrich must be really fired up. That's two plays in a row. They looked like he was shot out of a cannon and looking for somebody or headhunting. And uh, he caught Jackson this time and uh, rolled off him. And almost got him again as Jackson ran by, but 
you know when quarterbacks get that rush on like that you, uh, you just wonder what's happening. The ball is back at the 38. 12 yard lot. Vic Washington. Luster with the tackle. It will not be a first down. The penalty for the ineligible receiver uh, passed the previous play. Took the ball back considerably, and so they will be short by about a yard and a half. The third down coming up. with Tom Pullen at the 14-yard line after a nine-yard punt return. Football player by the name of Mo Racine is watching this game just down about 30 feet from us in the press box, and Bernie, it must be awfully frustrating for that 12-year veteran to have to watch from up here. I don't think Mo's ever been out of a season football game, or when I say a season football game, uh, never been out of a full season anyway, and it's very frustrating to uh, sit and watch your team out there play and knowing you can't help. From the 14, first down Toronto. <laughs> Simons. Poirier <laughs> runs him out of bounds. Long game, past the 40. Bill Simons on a long end sweep. It's a fine block by the guard. And there he is outrunning Kenny Lehman. The block down there was by Charlie Bray. Simons just runs out of running room on the sidelines over there. And it's a fine tackle by Joe Poirier, 17. Well, Simons surpasses his uh, previous long gain set earlier of 30. That one, 36 yards. And from the 50, first half. Toronto 50. He lost the ball. The Riders have it. We we're talking about the contain of Dave Brindley, but watch Gene Gaines, 22, just take the ball right out of his hands. Joiner Bernie makes the fumble recovery at center field. It's a rather dubious honor, but Ramey led in fumbles in the Western Conference last year. He had a total of nine. Jackson originally got away from Alan Ray Aldridge, a man with more pressure coming his way from Ed Harrington. And Vernon Van Oy finally had to succumb inside the 45. Mark yeah. Luster finally chopped him down. Alan Ray Aldridge, number 44, Bernie, seems to be out. He must be eating raw meat at halftime. I don't know what he's doing, Tom, but he is really keyed up in this second half. And uh, it seems to me like he really wants to put the pressure, especially on Jackson. And that's what he's uh, done on two occasions. He missed him again on his first blitzing effort and then uh, chased him all over the field and finally caught him again. Second and 22. What's your name? Jim Mankins has nine. Tackled by Dick Aldridge. on third and 13. Well, kick to Sternberg 34, even 32. Oh, 
Gary Sternberg. Turns the ball to the 32, Danny Beaver. Get him there. 38 yard punt, Bill Van Berkel. Five minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And the Rough Riders have taken the lead 17 to 15 on Don Southern's field goal. The tribute to these two defensive clubs that the scoring has not been greater than 32 points to this point. to his form of 1968. He must be very pleased with that contract that he signed because he certainly is running like he wants to stay with the Argonauts for a long while and uh, show them that he uh, he's worthy of that contract. And I think he really is. With that run, seven yards, Simons has reached the 100-yard mark in this game in 10 carries. Second and three. <laughs> Simons is set inside, and there is a marker. Rough Riders are called offside. It is Marshall Shirk, number 53, is leaving ahead of the ball snap, and he's definitely offside. He's in the middle of your picture there. And gives Toronto the first down at the 43, their own 43-yard line, trailing 17 to 15. 76 is Markle. Going to the far side, Thorpe and Taylor. Simons also spread wide, now in motion right with Ramey. Bill Simons throwing to Bobby Taylor. This is a setup that they normally do, uh, Don, uh, on those sweep passes type of thing, on the sweep, uh, when Bill Simons is tied up in there, he can throw the ball, and uh, Coach Kale said this is an option play that's on there constantly. And that little elbow thrown by Don Souther in there sparked a mild commotion over at the uh, Ottawa bench. Second down, three yards to go. Second and three from the 50. Tom Wilkinson, close, but appearing to be short of the first down. Billy Joe Booth and Marshall Shirk, the left side of that Ottawa defensive line with the tackles, and it's third down, less than a yard, and Dave Mann will come in with Alan Ray Aldridge. Third down, Argonaut punting team. Three minutes and 46 seconds to play in the third quarter. Ottawa leads 17-15. Number 20 is Barry Ardur, number 23, and you see Cooper there shielding the sun. Long kick. Ardern lost it. Cooper is just going to recover to avoid losing that ball a second time. And the Argonauts get a single point. Paul Markle was the downfield tackler. That sun is definitely a factor, as you mentioned earlier, Ramey having trouble. Now the Ottawa punt return team, that traveled 63 yards at 17 to 16. The CFL commissioner's office has announced that the 1969 official CFL statistics book is now available. All proceeds of the sale of the book will go to the development of minor football in Canada. Pretty good value, only a dollar a copy. Distribution now is underway this weekend. They should be on the newsstands Monday and Tuesday of this week. From the 25-yard line, after man's long single, Ottawa first down. Margene Atkins, all the way to the 40-yard line of Toronto. What an electrifying play. It's only a short breakout type of a pattern, but he's hit very quickly by Russ Jackson. And from then on, it's Oleo Margene Atkins with his great speed down the sidelines. 
Blocks by Whit Tucker and trying to get away. They just have to hang on to him. Went 45 yards into the 12-minute mark of the third quarter of the score is Ottawa 17 and Toronto 16. Is there something burning in your house? A match? A cigarette? Or are you using electricity carelessly? Before the next four minutes have passed, one of these will start a fire in someone's home. The cigarette that falls unnoticed. The live butt that gets emptied into a wastebasket. Two frequent fire starters. Here's one more. Careless overloading of an electrical circuit with too many appliances. When they blow a fuse and you put in a heavier one, the result is overheated wiring and often a fire. Careless accumulation of trash is another one-way ticket to fire. And the careless use and storage of flammable fluids. Don't let carelessness cause a fire in your house. Take time to take care. Tom Wilkinson with Frank Cosentino, the Argonauts backup quarterback, Cosentino at the Toronto bench. We hope that you're enjoying this one. The Rough Riders leading the Argonauts, 17 to 60, in Ottawa on the move, first down at the Toronto 40. Adkins again. Ed Learn brought him down at the 25 after a gain of 15. The Argonaut pass defense has not solved the Margene Atkins problem well at all. Just too tough to contain. He seems to hurt the most when the Argonauts are in a zone. With that Tomlin man for man on him, in the zone he's been most effective. Atkins has six catches for 140 yards. Jim Mankins may have a first down at the 15. Jackson caught Alan Ray Aldrich, number 44, in a blitz that time. And he's to cover that outside zone area there. Uh, that was a very fine call and at the right opportune time. The yard sticks out. And they verify a rough rider first down. between the 14 and the 15. One minute and 50 seconds to play in this third quarter, 17-16 Ottawa, and the Riders doing all they can to increase that advantage. Jackson had to throw under real good pressure. And Tommy Pullen is a little unhappy he couldn't bring it in with number 15 Edler and 27 Marvin Luster. Luster applying most of the defensive uh, pressure against him at that goal line and just batted his arm and got the ball free. So it's second down, the 14 and a half yard line. The Riders were down here before and were unable to get the seven points. Southern with a field goal gave them the lead they enjoy now. Down to the 10 yard line, if you saw that marker fly. Ottawa has been called for holding. So, what do you do here? You leave the ball at the 10, decline the penalty, and force the third down situation, or do you move it back and potentially give the riders an extra play? That's what the, rough, the Argonauts are discussing right now with Harry Ross. Ross indicates the Argonauts have declined. Ball stays at the 10 where it is third and five. And this will force the Rough Riders into another field goal attempt rather than go for the seven points. So 
Southern's try from the 18. It is wide left. And the single point conceded by Mike Even. So the Rough Riders have a two point lead now. 18 to 6, 44 seconds of play on the clock. Of course, that is not official. Less than a minute to go. 